Princess Ubaratana is a member of the Thai royal family, but the MIT graduate could be Thailand's next prime minister. She's the daughter of the late king Pumipol and queen Sirikit. But she doesn't need her royal title to be famous. She's a gold medalist in the Southeast Asian Games and an advocate of HIV awareness. She's practically spent her entire life breaking the royal protocols. There was even a time when she decided to follow her heart, renounce her royal title, and marry an American. But entering politics may be Ubaratana's most daring move to date. So make sure you watch this video until the end to see why Princess Ubaratana is a force to be reckoned with. When Princess Ubaratana has something to say, you can bet your life she's going to say it. This Thai royal has a history of breaking protocols and tearing down social norms, but rules are meant to be broken, right? So who exactly is this rebellious princess? Well, for starters, her name is Princess Ubaratana Rajan Kanya. Although she's a Thai princess, she was born in Lausanne, Switzerland, while her dad was studying there. But Princess Ubaratana isn't an only child. She has three other siblings, King Vahira Longkorn, Princess Maha Chakri Sirindorn, and Princess Shulahorn. As a teen, the princess competed in the 1967 Southeast Asian Games in Bangkok but she caused quite a stir when she fell in love with an American man named Peter Jensen. In a move that made everyone's jaws drop at the palace, Ubalratana gave up her royal title in 1972 in order to be with the love of her life. But she was still focusing on her career, of course. She wound up earning a Bachelor of Science, and in 1975, she received a Master's in Public Health at the University of California. Clearly, she had a lot on her plate, but she was living the fairy tale romance most Disney princesses can only dream of. But sadly, Sadly, her fairy tale romance didn't get a happily ever after. Princess Ubaratana spent 26 years of her life in the United States, but there was something other than her studies that was keeping her there. They say all good things must come to an end, but it was more like a crash and burn for Ubaratana and a romance to Jensen. In 1998, the two had had enough and decided to call it quits. During a news conference in Bangkok, Ubaratana made some stunning accusations and threw her ex-husband under the bus. She claimed that Jensen had strayed from the marriage and used their kids as a bargaining tool during their divorce settlement. But Jensen ended up losing his battle to retain custody of their son, Bhumi, who was autistic. Unsurprisingly, the princess needed a change. So in 2001, she returned to Thailand permanently and resumed her royal duties. Sadly, she was not able to regain her full royal title, but she was still treated with respect and loved by many. In fact, she is still referred to as Han Kramomying, which translates to daughter of the queen regent. Clearly, her failed relationship hasn't deterred her from going after what she wants. Perhaps that's one of the reasons why people are so fascinated by her. But Princess Uboratana had been in the spotlight for so long, it's no wonder she's got so many fans. As it turns out, the princess is super popular in Thailand, both for her antics and her breathtaking beauty. In fact, she's so stunning that she's earned the nickname La Poupe, which means doll in French. But most people can't wrap their heads around the fact that she's the eldest child in her family line. When you first take a look at this beautiful woman, you automatically assume that she's in her 30s. But she's actually 67 years old, and she's not afraid of the spotlight either. She's become quite a celebrity in Thailand, and even made a few appearances on TV and and movies. In a way, you could say she's like Thailand's version of Oprah. At one point, she hosted a talk show called To Be Number One Variety, where she offered advice to youths in need. She's also got an incredible voice, which allowed her to perform in numerous concerts. She even recorded a few theme songs, which makes her resume even more impressive. But that's not the only thing that sets her apart from her royal siblings. Princess Ubaratana is a triple threat. She sings, acts, and advises the next generation to make wise choices. She even made an appearance at the Cannes Festival to promote the Thai film industry. Clearly, Ubaratana is a pretty unorthodox princess who's in a class of her own, and she's not afraid of speaking her mind. But not everyone believes she belongs in the world of politics. After all, she did turn her back on the royal family to pursue true love nearly 50 years ago. But something's changed, and she's laughing in the face of tradition to take on what may be her most challenging role yet. We're sure she's giving her brother, King Maha Bahiralongkorn, a reason to freak out by entering politics, which is undoubtedly a breach of royal protocols. From a traditional perspective, the Thai royals have kept their distance from all political matters. Even the current monarch wouldn't dream of getting involved. But Princess Ubaratana seems to have other plans at least according to the rumor mill, which spun stories of her desire to become a political candidate. But will this latest act of rebellion be something society can tolerate, or will she get shot down before she has a chance to shine? 
Well, that question might get an answer sooner than we expected. On February 8, the Thai Raska Char Party announced that Princess Ubaratana had been nominated as a candidate in the prime ministerial race. But the controversial Shinaratwa family is a polarizing family that has reigned supreme over Thai politics for years. They've been accused of corrupting and enriching themselves and their allies while supporting their vote banks with expensive advocate policies. The princess is known for being pretty unconventional, and the royal family is used to her rebellious ways, but will her determination work in her favor when she enters politics? Besides, most Thai people automatically assume that her brother, the king, would support her despite the royal protocols. But while she had some people backing her bold move, one person close to her heart wasn't having any of it. Unfortunately, that was her brother. King Lahiralongkorn made his feelings quite clear when he said his sister's political candidacy was completely inappropriate. He went on to remind everyone that it went against the constitution for royalty to get involved in Thai politics. Given his influence, his public opposition puts the princess at risk of being disqualified from the running. But this isn't exactly a typical situation either. The monarchy has semi-divine status in Thailand. Statements and public appearances are often connected to royal events or duties. And yet, a disagreement this big has not happened in a very long time. But some diplomats find it inconceivable that the princess would pursue her political ambitions without the blessing of the monarch. And yet, while her brother, the king, is strongly opposed to her candidacy, she's moving forward anyway. We're not sure if the king will come around and take her side, but we're pretty sure he's not about to back down. Meanwhile, the princess is not afraid of a little controversy. She is one determined woman who's very popular for her own accomplishments, so it's safe to say that her rebellious and unconventional ways will resonate and appeal to today's generation and get her the votes she needs. She's a gracious leader who has thanked her supporters for their love and kindness toward her. So what if she has a few opponents out there. She's got over a hundred thousand Instagram followers that stand by her. That's like a massive political army of supporters, in a way. She tends to do things her way, even if the king doesn't have her back. And if she wins, Thailand will likely benefit too. Ubaratana has always been the princess of the people, and she's got an incredible heart, which one would expect from a royal and a possible prime minister. She's the chairperson of not one, but four nonprofit foundations dedicated to supporting people with autism, aiding the poor, and fighting against drugs. But that's not all. We don't know where she finds the time, but the princess is also heavily involved in charity work. Back in 1992, she started the Ubaratana Foundation to help children that were orphaned by HIV-related illnesses. But her turbulent past is what's fueling her in this controversial campaign. In a 2017 speech, Princess Ubaratana said we must always devote our heart, our knowledge, and our part of ourselves in everything we do. And we absolutely agree. But her heart has gotten a little bruised along the way. Then again, you can't make an omelet without cracking a few eggs, right? Ubaratana has definitely experienced a few obstacles along the way, like when she renounced her title to live like a commoner for a love that didn't last. But you know what they say, it's better to have loved and lost than to have never loved at all. And she's used her strength and determination to get through the rough patches she's experienced ever since she announced her candidacy as prime minister. Sure, you can tell that the princess loves to be in the spotlight, but she loves giving and helping others more. Some critics say she's never been involved in politics before, but her interest surfaced when she traveled around the country and witnessed suffering firsthand. Sadly, the Thai election panel decided to disqualify Princess Ubaratana from running for prime minister. According to them, members of the royal family should be above politics. If the nomination had gone through, we're sure we would have seen massive change happen. But how's the princess doing after her stunning, short-lived candidacy? Well, she posted a heartfelt message on her private Instagram account that said, I am sad that the sincere intention to work for the country and us ties has created a problem that shouldn't happen in this day and age. And she certainly has a point. She believes it would really help the current situation if people People would just open their minds. She said in an interview, if seniors open theirs to accept the reality of the world, to see other people's ideas, to broaden our attitudes, then we can walk together. When the official list of candidates for prime minister was released, Princess Ubaratana's name was excluded. The announcement probably felt like a ton of bricks hit her all at once. But even though she's saddened by the outcome, the princess wasted no time and got back to working with youth. Clearly, her compassion for the people comes naturally, and she's willing to sacrifice sacrifice everything to help others. As far as the Raska Char party leader is concerned, Ubaratana was the right woman for the job. And honestly, it's kind of hard to disagree.
Do you think Princess Ubaratana would have aced her role as Prime Minister? Or do you think she's better suited running her foundations? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to The Taco.